Let's start off by talking about the setup. I am using a number five cup on my torch. Whether you use a standard collet body or a gas lens doesn't really matter, but don't go too big on your cup size for aluminum. A number five to a number eight works pretty good. By the way, if you don't know what those numbers mean, it's the number of sixteenths of an inch in the hole through the end. So this is a number five, it's five sixteenths of an inch. As far as machine settings go, you need to understand how all these settings work but not at day one. Just use the settings that I have here on the screen and that amperage is for this one eighth of an inch thick or three millimeter thick material that I'm gonna be welding on. Prep this metal for welding. I'm gonna wipe it down with some acetone on a rag just to make sure it's nice and clean. Because this is new fresh material, I'm not gonna worry about wire brushing with a stainless steel brush. Now the goal for today is to run a bead on flat plate. It's not even to weld anything together. That's the place to start. And in fact, we're gonna break it down to even smaller chunks and not even run a bead yet. We're gonna start off by doing some practice exercises. The first exercise is just creating a weld puddle and recognizing when you have a puddle there. So I'm holding the torch with the end of the tungsten electrode about an eighth of an inch or three millimeters away from the material. That works out pretty well for aluminum. Press my foot pedal and start to add some amperage and then watch it, and sometimes it takes a second, so you need to be patient and wait until you see that material melt. Once you see that shiny weld puddle, go ahead and let off the pedal. That's it. We're gonna do that exercise about 20 to 50 times. And you might be thinking, 20 to 50 times, that seems like a lot for something so ridiculously simple. Well, it's not gonna take that long. It's gonna take you just maybe five or 10 minutes. The reason to do it over and over again is you're training your mind to recognize when there's a weld puddle there because that's really important. Now, once you've finished that exercise, we're gonna move on to the next exercise. And this one is gonna train you to be able to move your torch along while maintaining the arc length between the end of the tungsten electrode and your workpiece and the angle of your torch. These are the critical aspects that you need to keep under control to be able to get a good weld. And you need to do it while you travel in a controlled way. That's the challenge here, that's the whole game. I'm holding my torch with that nice short arc length and it's off of vertical by about 10 degrees pointing in the direction that I'm gonna move. So go ahead and start your arc and then once you see a puddle, move along and try to move that puddle about one inch or 25 millimeters and then stop and it's as simple as that. And then repeat that exercise over and over again, probably 20 or so times, moving that puddle along, and you'll get a feel for being able to progress along a weld. Now we're not running a long weld, that's gonna take a little bit more skill in how to move in a comfortable way. This time we're gonna be using some filler metal. This is where it gets exciting. I like to hold my filler metal by taking my hand vertically like this and setting it down in that groove and putting it between two fingers. This allows me to feed it like that. Now feeding the filler metal is gonna be one of the last things to come as you're learning, um, but it's just a good habit to hold it like this as you dab it in, because that's gonna make it easier to learn that later on. Now with your torch, I'm gonna hold that close arc length and angle that we've practiced before and do the same thing we did in the first practice exercise by creating that small weld puddle. But this time I'm going to touch my filler metal to it and just add a little dab of material to it. Now, it's likely as you're doing this exercise that once in a while you're gonna bump into that tungsten electrode with the filler metal as you're learning to do that. In practice, you always wanna have a clean tungsten electrode. It runs so much better and avoids contamination. But for the sake of this exercise, I'd just press on whenever that happens to get as much practice in as you can in the amount of time that you have. So we're gonna repeat this exercise over and over again about 50 times just to get the feel of that and learn to recognize that puddle, learn to add the filler metal to it and go from there. Typically, the textbook answer is to have it 90 degrees or coming at a right angle from the torch like this so that the heat doesn't start to melt the filler metal off. In all reality, you can go up a little bit from that so it's a little tighter, but just shoot for that 90 degrees right now while we're practicing this. All right, at this point, we've learned all of the fundamental skills. We've learned how to hold an arc length, 
how to travel and move that, how to recognize a puddle, and how to add a dab of filler metal. Now we can put it together to run your first weld beads. So to do this, we're gonna start out in the same way that we did on the last exercise. So you'll start by forming that weld puddle and then dabbing some filler metal right into it. This time, instead of stopping, progress forward a little, add another dab, progress forward a little, add another dab, and continue to do that as you work your way along the bead. And from there, you should be able to get a bit of a stack of dimes bead, breaking down the fundamental skills you need, learning those, and then putting them all together saves a ton of time. So if you want me to walk you through that in my online courses, check those out below. The main thing to keep in mind is you need to have a plan when you go out and practice so that you go out, I'm gonna learn this skill, this is the drill I'm gonna do to do it, and then at the end of the day, this is what I want the outcome to be. And if you do that, you'll be able to learn in so much less time than if you just go out there and try to do everything all at once. So hopefully this has been helpful to you. I'll link some other videos in the description below that might help you out as far as learning the overall fundamentals and theory behind uh, some aluminum TIG welding. Until next time, weld safe, and we'll see you then.